VGK explodes for four goals in the second period in St. Louis en route to a 6-3 win on the comeback trail. We'll get to all that and much, much more when we return here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen. And find us wherever you get your podcast. Please subscribe to the Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Go to fanduel.com slash locked on to kick off this NFL season. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Chris, first, before we begin, uh, we want to send out, obviously, all of our prayers, condolences to everyone on the UNLV campus. Uh, Again, folks that survived yesterday with an active shooter on campus and uh, those that didn't, we send prayers up to them, to their families. Uh, And you having children, I can't even imagine what it was like yesterday a harrowing experience for a lot of my friends who have kids on the campus and it was just very scary and so again we'd like to start off today's show uh by just sending out everything um all of our love and condolences and prayers to everyone there on the UNLV campus it was a scary scary day and a scary situation and you see this stuff all the time at other campuses and it's like wow that's horrible and you think what if that were to happen here well yesterday that bad dream became a reality so we just want to make sure that we uh send out all of our love and uh hopefully everyone just gets back to normalcy there on campus i you know as a unlv alum that student union at 12 o'clock noon is packed right and me because i never went to classes i was always all student union and but a lot of people in that student union yesterday and in beam hall at at high noon uh, and a guy goes in there with a gun and it could have been a lot worse and uh, all the first responders campus police did a remarkable job we have to give kudos to them yeah um, you heard uh, coach cassidy mention in the post game last night about there's a lot of ties from UNLV to not just the Golden Knights, but all the sports teams around town. And, you know, first thing you're thinking about people you brush arms with and stuff in the press boxes and everything. And, you know, I was not much to add. I was driving home yesterday in the afternoon and saw one police officer on 215, saw another police officer on 215. And I realized something was up and I put a police scanner on it right away and figure out what was going on. And yeah, it was terrible, 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 terrible. And that's I don't have the right thing to say. Yeah, and you know all my tie-ins with UNLV and how to check on a lot of people and then people checking on me because sometimes I'm on that campus, but, you know, it wasn't about anything with me, but it was about just checking in on all those folks that were there, people that work there that I know uh, were locked down for hours and scary situations. So hopefully this never happens in our community again. This is such a small community that everyone was so shook yesterday um, throughout the community. I mean, it's not something, it was something that we saw nationally. I'm watching Fox News nationally, right? And that's, you know, the top story and live shots and everything else uh, because I couldn't get enough from the local reporters, unfortunately, and it's not a joke here. Uh, But seriously, like it just really does rock our community when something is bad here you realize what a great community we really do live in uh and just the love that everyone has and respect uh for others for the most part in in our city so i just wanted to get to that and uh now we can talk some hockey uh didn't want to just shoot that off right because it's something that just real it, it was real and uh thanks to our you know some of our uh, friends from the Lockdown Network were ch- checking and reaching out and making sure everything was cool with all of us, too. So thank you so much. 
uh, we'll, we'll talk hockey now. Uh, so because we have to continue with our lives as well and live each and every day to the fullest. Uh, the period two, St. Louis, okay, is that, I don't know, hard to segue out of those things. Uh, second hey, Tony, period, I, Tony, let me get you, I'll get you in, in a good spot right now, okay? William Carlson scored an empty nickel. Why? Why? 11.8 seconds to go. He's like 150 feet away, and he sends the backhander into the net. Like, what? Why? Just why? First, Chris, Cassidy Chris froze him. And he and Chris heard, Chris heard uh, empty net goal, so he wanted to come and say hello in the first segment today. What's up, Chris? What's that up, was Chris? pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. He grumpy. He grumpy. He grumpy. <laughs> He's pointing. He's pointing like this. He's like, there you go, grumpy. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Grumpy. Okay. Definitely grumpy. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's All your right. segue. All right. Thanks for piling on. Okay, I don't understand why. First, first though, in all seriousness. Cassidy froze him out of the lineup and they were on TV. My the one time that my app was actually working and they're going, Hey, usually William Carlson's out there in these situations. And then they well, show him for the, end, the end, of the, end of the shift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he's on the bench, Chris, and then they send him back out there. Oh my goodness. So in any event, I want to talk about period two in St. Louis though. Uh, and we talked about this on the show previewing the first meeting earlier this week and the fact that uh, Craig Berube was saying, especially in the second period, we just can't seem to get things together. We fall apart. Remember that? Uh, so the blues were up three to one in this game. It appeared as though they were well in control. And then the golden Knights, Jack Eichel with a fadeaway jumper. He called it the fadeaway jumper on his shot. <laughs> Those are his words. His 12th goal of the season. It was a legitimate goal. It wasn't like an empty net goal. Uh, so that led the second period scoring parade. Marsha saw the power play goal. Kolasar's second. I should have got on little Chris because Kolasar scored. And Amadio late in the second. And what led to this, this goal eruption last night? Um, I mean... <sighs> I think they were just pissed off. I mean, I don't know if there's a better, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but I think after the first period, you know, I, I would have to wonder if someone, if there was some type of speech, first of all, some type of, you know, Mark Stone getting something going or Cassidy saying something or March or so, or maybe someone you don't expect to, you know, stand up and take the mic for a second, but you really saw an inspired effort and it doesn't start. Yes. The Jack Eichel goal was what started it, but, it wasn't just the Eichel goal. It was the, I mean, Barbashev had a bad first period. Let's start there. Barbashev had a very bad first period. Both of the goals scored. He was out there and just didn't see the best. I mean, he turns the puck over at the red line and yeah. then just kind of an ole as the other player was cutting in, which, which happens. It happens. But Barbashev had a poke check in the offensive zone that sent the puck down to whoever got the assist on the goal. And then obviously Eichel's right up there in the bumper going backwards and hitting fadeaways, I guess. So credit Barbashev for making a big play to start all of this. And then just the goal, it's all little things, right? You know, and the blues were on, were just completely unwound penalty after penalty after penalty, which is why I thought was going to happen with the golden Knights with March or so. Because he was not happy in the first period. You saw him chirping the ref and oh, he wasn't blasted. happy. They got him, you know, saying a couple things on a, you know, not, not on the microphone, but, you know, just you saw his face and you can tell what he was saying. So I think it just kind of starts with the Golden Knights doing all the little things. And we've seen the Golden Knights have these great second periods. And I think I would definitely call this the first immaculate second period. And you bet your uh, bet your bottom dollar I'll be uh, talking to coach about that the next practice I go to. And I'll bring that one up. Um, I guess the point I do want to bring up really fast and I'll turn it back over is we talked about this a little bit yesterday on the podcast. The Golden Knights last season in the playoffs, after a loss, were 5-1. and one. They outscored their opponents 25-12. to 12. They more than doubled up on them. Why does that matter in the regular season? Well, in the playoffs, when you lose, you play that same team again. That's how the playoffs work. you got to beat them four out of seven games. The Golden Knights were 5-1 and one when losing to the team that they play again and doubled up on the scoring. So... Lo and behold, the Golden Knights doubled up on the scoring last night, winning 6-3 when they faced the same team 
and the same goaltender again. So that tells you something. I'll start with coaching right there. I will start with coaching and adjustments right there. Okay. And also VGK 8 0 and 1 on dad's trips. <laughs> so the dads uh, contributed there. Um, we saw everyone just, you know, high fiving and pouncing on Mr. Eichel after well, White Cloud's dad Eichel. was in the interview with him. I thought that was so cool yeah, after that. The was game. Cool. You just sitting next to him but and he, they asked him about it. So White Cloud scored the goal and then his dad was texting. People were making fun of that, of course, on social media. Everyone else, were the dads were just getting drunk up there. Let's face it. They were. And then, they, well, no, someone's dad was drinking Diet Pepsi. I saw that. Okay. And, well, the, the cup was Diet Pepsi. Come on, bro. Old trick. Uh, puck possession for VGK. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. Again, uh, the way that they've been dominating in the attacking zone. I mean, that's After how the first it period, definitely. First. Yeah. In the second period. They're starting to play keep away. That's a sign of them playing more cohesive, right? And just, again, just the push by VGK. We could see that coming at the start of that goal eruption last night. I heard on the broadcast at one point in the third period, the shots were 14-1 to 1 in favor of the Golden it, Knights. It was as... 12 or 13 to nothing yeah, early it's on. Just, I mean, we've seen the Golden assault. Knights yeah. go through these spurts last season a lot where uh – -huh. XYZ team has not had a shot and goal in nine minutes, in 11 minutes, in 13 minutes. And I think we looked at the Capitals game over the weekend, and the Caps had five shots through like 32 minutes or something like that. Like, it's just remarkable how the Golden Knights can suffocate you. And let's not forget that Shea Theodore and Alec Martinez are not in the lineup right now. Two very key pieces that the top line defenseman and, and the second defenseman, like, they are such key pieces. So credit Ben Hudden for plugging the gap, plugging the hole. Credits Keaton Korazak for his game is expanding so well. And I saw a play going back to Monday's game. Korazak has the, the confidence now. Uh, there was a three on two situation where he was kind of the trail. And the second uh, the puck made its entry, he just goes straight to the offensive side of the net, just goes straight there doing what you're supposed to. So, you know, Korazak's game is expanding and, you know, the future of the defense isn't in bad hands right now. The biggest adjustment that Cassidy made between the first and second periods was the entry from the neutral zone for St. Louis. They clogged up the neutral zone a little bit more, and that led to great success for the VGK. Great success. He's our guy. He's our guy until Aiden gets healthy. That's our next topic here. Stay with us on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. We spend a lot of time together talking, all of us here, and we get fired up together with wins and losses, who starts and who sits, and we are really thankful for the connection that we have right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. And today, we want to chat a little bit more personally. We just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED med medications. You realize what that means? Well, bring on the extended travel, bring on the natural disaster, or supply chain issue. You are covered, our friends, and you don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis or Viagra and those prescriptions. And this is made possible because of our good friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. And remember to use the promo code locked on at checkout for a discount as well. Several uh, verified customers uh, believe in this whole process. Uh, one said, I ordered the antibiotic kit as well. I feel secure now, and prices are lower than local pharmacies. If you or someone that you know would like to get some peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, then go to jacemedical.com to see if it is offered for you. Remember to use the promo code LOCKEDON for $20 off of your purchase. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Don't forget to go to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights, and you can check out, of course, everything that we have there, the content, uh, last night's uh, post game, that little clip that Chris and Chris did, the stars, by the way, of their own show right here on the Locked On Golden Knights Network. 
wherever you're at, go to YouTube, check that out. Uh, so Bruce Cassidy, has he lost confidence in Logan Thompson? That's an overreact. Um, it, it's amazing what a difference a year makes, first of all. So last year, Logan was definitely the man, and Aiden Hill was the man as long as Logan Thompson wasn't the man. And that's just what happens sometimes. There's no issues. But you can look at Coach Cassidy's comments after yesterday's game in a few different ways. He's our guy until Aiden gets healthy. All right, let's be clear. Aiden is the guy this year. It's only at about a 60-40 clip, 60% of the starts for Aiden in favor of uh, uh, over 40% of the starts for Logan Thompson. So the split isn't that big. And however long it's going to be until Aiden comes back, my guess is this is going to get much closer to 50-50. Aiden Hill is pulled uh, two weeks ago now for precautionary reasons. Well, I want to know what the heck they were cautioning because obviously this has become a little bit of a bigger you know, circumstance. Maybe they're just simply resting Aiden through this not difficult portion of the schedule, or maybe something else is going on. We don't know. Only a few people actually do know, but it's an interesting comment. I mean, is there confidence in Logan Thompson? I think so. I mean, the dude's got a what a nine two save percent, maybe nine one something after last night. Um, has not been getting the run, the Jacob Degrom run support. There you go, Tony. But he got it last night, and he's been getting a little more of it as of late. You take the two shutouts out there. Are you writing a sign? What are you, are you drawing or something over there? Maybe not. No, I'm not. I drawing thought you're gonna draw a sign like like I do. Like I had, no, no, no. I I for you over there. Oh, okay, fair enough. Okay, can you hear this? A little bit. It's foreigner head games, head games. She's so sorry. Wow, that's that's fun, Tony. That's fun. All right, turn it off in case we get in trouble. Oh yeah. Oh, All right. That. So no, All you're right, good. Ten second clip. We're good. Ted seconds. No, you're, you're good. It was short. It was short. We only got fifteen we seconds or less. We're safe. Fifteen seconds yeah, yeah, or yeah. less. I'm good. But back to the comment. I mean, listen. The concerning part I have isn't about confidence or the starting goaltending on this team or anything like that. The concern is how much longer is Aiden Hill going to be out? That's my concern. This started as a precautionary thing. Precautionary became two games. Precautionary became not traveling on the dance trip, unfortunately. So this is interesting to see how much longer Aiden's going to be out. And you hope he can return as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, we're looking at Yuri Patera on Sunday, and I'm, not, I'm okay with that say, against the Why Sharks. do you say Sunday? Why 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 can't he go against uh, Dallas? Why wouldn't you put him in there? Why would you? Uh, the system defensively is working right now. Uh, sends a big message, you know, to LT if there is anything that is wrong with his game. And there's nothing wrong with his game. What's wrong? What's wrong with LT's game? I know. I'm just saying. I'm just asking. Well, if Cassidy's concerned, then we have to act concerned, right? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I read the I read the comment, and a couple people hit me on Twitter after I posted the tw the the quote, um, thinking there was more of a concern. I'm I'm more concerned about the amount of time Logan's going to be gone or Aiden's going to be out. Pardon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always get those two mixed up. But I know you do. Is there more to it than that? Maybe. Always could be. Cassidy is you know been like that sometimes with the goalies in the past. You know the the one more save comment and stuff like that, or the other guy and stuff. So. Maybe yeah. there is a little bit more to it, but I think this injury with Aiden Hill is a little more than I think we're beyond precautionary right now. Put it to you like yeah, that. Yeah, it is. So he's listed what day to day? Uh, yeah, it? it's day. It was, yeah, the the dreaded day to day for now, guys. Like I'll, I'll say this until until the Carlson stops scoring empty net goals. Not the cows Oof, come home. Never gonna but happen. Never gonna happen. You know. Whenever it's the XYZ player is day to day for now, you know, <laughs> you see the way, that's a concern. Did you see the way? I got to ask you this. Did you see the way Vegas Bjorn was celebrating the empty net or two? He was going bananas. Like, why? I didn't Just see. Why? Logan's got a 917 right now. He's a 917 save percentage. It's dipping a little bit, but seven and three on the year, two, three, eight goals against. He does the one thing that every goalie is responsible for doing, and that's giving the team a chance to win every single game he plays. I can't think of one game this season now that we're going to dive in a little bit here 
one game this season where we can point at Aiden or Logan and say, that's the reason the Golden Knights lost this game. There have been some bad goals, sure. I mean, Logan's in overtime was a little bit rough, but they left him hanging out to dry. Aiden Hill uh, whiffed on the, the glove attempt with five seconds left against the Flames. Like, it's going to yeah. happen. But they got him to that point in the game. So the goaltending is fine. The defense is fine. Everything is okay right now. Everything is okay. Coming up next, we talk about the power play for VGK. It's red hot. Is that because they're only playing St. Louis the last two games? We'll get into that when we return right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. Score right now and during this NFL season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks, folks, if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get into the action. The app is so easy to use, and there is a wide range of betting options, including point spreads, player props, totals, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate all of you. You can find us wherever you get your podcast and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the perfect stocking stuffer this time of year. Just put in a little note. You have won a subscription to Locked On, Golden Knights, maybe. We do, we, we, we do, we do custom notes, too, if you need. Anyone needs a custom note to put in. Custom, there, and napkins. Remember. We do custom napkin scribbles if you want that. That would have been an NFT two years ago, right? Like when that was red hot, probably. We could be the first uh, locked on podcast to have their own custom line of napkins. There we go. We could do napkins, bro. Okay. Eight VGK power plays. Can you say the word um, rigged? Oh, stop could you say it. stop eight it. power play opportunities? A team record for VGK. Last I saw, 18 shots on goal in those power play opportunities for VG. That's an entire game for teams. Uh, Braden Chen, he said, you saw it all. There were some penalties that certainly weren't. But it was just ridiculous, the amount of penalties. It's most of them talk. were. It's I'll give you. No, most, most of them were. Most of those were penalties and stupid, dumb penalties at that. But uh, you're saying VGK is red hot, huh? On the power play? Well, they're getting 100 opportunities a game. Hey, hey, you got you to practice somewhere. I mean, for I, I'll start by, listen, going through the media and chirping and stuff like that, whether it's, you know, it's just it's just loser talk. It's all it is. And this is on any side. Like, I, I, on Monday morning, like I think I put a tweet out, Sunday night, everyone was chirping refs for – everything that was happening throughout the day, every fan base for hockey and for football. And if you're chirping the refs, it's because your team isn't playing well enough. First of all, just get that out there right now. And I don't even care about people are going to say, what about the not a major drama? Well, the goal night shouldn't have got to seven games. It should never happen in the first place. So I don't even care about the not a major stuff anymore. Um, just update on stats, I guess, for the Golden Knights power play 13th overall or 12th overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13th overall right now uh -huh. with a 22% conversion rates and New Jersey is 36. Wow. Edmonton is down at 26 right now. So Edmonton, I mean, Edmonton had just a crazy thing happening last year. I thought I saw a stat where the St. Louis blues were really bad at home on the kill. Maybe I could be wrong about that, but I thought scripts displayed something which yeah. is a terrible stat with well, how they were at, at home. home. They were like two for 25, I think, in power play opportunities. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Going um, into the game last night. But, of course, they were never on the power play last night. So this, But this St. Louis Blues team, Chris? Yeah, their power play is 31st in the league, the Blues. This is the least penalized team in the NHL. The Blues? Yes, going into last night's game. All the more reason they shouldn't be chirping through. Like that's loser, that's loser talk. Loser talk. That's wow. Loser talk. Their uh, average was uh six minutes. Oh no. The least penalized. I don't know. Anyway, eight power plays. I have six minutes. You got you, you got it right. You got it right. Don't know the your napkins. 
I don't know the significance of that number. Is that, does that mean that's the amount of time that they spend in the box per game? Yeah, if you're yeah. saying six minutes, yeah, it's three penalties a game, okay. which is probably six fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Wrong. But why the fifteen seconds? I don't get that. Okay, in any event, uh, because penalties ending, maybe because of uh, either another penalty happening or a power play goal. I would guess, but I don't know. All right. We'll um. Talk. So, uh, Golden Knights, their uh, penalty kill. While we're kind of on the special teams topic, fourth overall in the league on the kill. That's uh, and they're only two. They're less than two percent behind Boston at top right on the top. So. This is interesting, and we talked about the significance of special teams last season. Special teams did not make it easy on the Golden Knights. They were spectacular five-on-five, five, which is what carried them in the regular season, and then obviously everything went well in the playoffs. But the special teams are making things easier on the team right now with the fourth-ranked kill and uh, 12th or 13th overall power play, which might be climbing the charts in the next uh few weeks or so the way that things are going their their power play was ranked i believe 18th last season and the kill was i don't think it was in the top third it definitely was not in the top third of the league i don't believe so that's important right now right um that is what might keep the golden knights from having you know one of those big lulls if you will like they did prior to the all-star game last year where they were what two and eight or something it was just a just a terrible stretch going to uh the all-star break and then obviously uh the team got rested and things got going again. So who knows? I mean, through uh, it's December the 7th, Golden Knights are still uh, back on top of the league overall in points. Percentage-wise, they're probably third or fourth, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's kind of all clicking right now, even despite all the injuries and man games lost. I mean, I think we're still talking about a team, Tony, that's only had their full roster on the ice for four periods. I think it was the game against the Flyers. And then Chandler Stevenson got got run from that game early in the first period. And I think it was the next game against the Penguins. And I think every game since then has had at least one or more pieces missing from the line. But I'm just talking goaltenders. I'm talking one of the top 18 players on the team. So, yeah. you know, it's it's all working out. And Mark Stone, his back is holding up so far. Knock on, knock on uh, wood or anything you can think of. Okay, and with that power play unit, before we go here quickly, uh, I just wanted to ask you what the difference is in the structure of the power play. Uh, I don't see, like, the bumper player in front of the net. They're going more low to high, and they're finding the gaps, right? Yeah, no, I was just trying to think think a little bit there as you were saying, like, what was different. And on the first power play units, on the, on the Eichel unit, you got a lot – of power out there and the second Sometimes, unit is the howden unit would that be it's the, bar, I'll call it the barbashev units okay, barbashev we'll wah Mario, and stuff yeah, like that no, i know so the difference first of all you have with the top unit sometimes they're looking for these shots instead of taking a shot it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't um the second unit is looking for not the right shot but a quality shot and eichel broke this down really well um I, was Ken, someone asked, I forgot who it was. I think it was Ken from Sinbin, but I could be wrong. Sorry, Ken, if I'm misquoting you on this one. But I'm pretty sure he Eichel was asked about being on the off wing, moved to a different spot on the power play. And Eichel broke the whole thing down very, very well. So that might be a key change, too, as far as just moving the personnel around a little bit. But just from the eye test for me, it's not about necessarily finding the right shot but making a good shot and when you have on that first unit all that talent they're going to be looking for that pass they're going to be looking for that for that pass across the slot or that that big one timer whereas William Carlson prime example and he's been on the top unit lately but you know William Carlson and even Jack Eichel's goal uh, we're talking um Eichel's goal Monday against the Blues and William Carlson had one the previous week where they just got the puck on the right circle they took two steps and shots and they had traffic in front of the net. So a lot of different creativity happening and maybe a lot more skill, a lot more, maybe not skill, but the the smarts, the awareness versus the skill kind of taking over is probably what I would say is the key difference. We're seeing a 100-point score Jack Eichel right now this season. We're seeing 50 goals, like I always kind of say in that little promo, right? We are, well, he scored... Now goals in the last four games. I got a little bit ahead of myself because I said he already did that. Well, he's catching how, up. But how many points does he have total now? 
Eichel right now is at 30 and 27. So, I mean, it's only paced for like 88 to 90. I say only 88 to 90 points. But the goal's got to, if he's getting 50, Tony, the goal's got to start coming. He's at 12 through 27. So, yeah, that's a pace well, for, him out that's there, a pace for know, 35, 33 goals. Yeah. You leave him out there on the empty net unit. He missed one just a little bit wide last night. So I was he, that was close. That was close. But he, he close. knew Carlson need, he wanted Carlson to catch up in the goal column. Out of those dads, who do you think drinks the most? Oh, God, I have no idea. I have no <laughs> I'd say, idea. Well, I call, I think has the drinking gene, the way that he talks about drinking on the road. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about who's which kid is probably the craziest on a team that drives their dad dad the most nuts, and that's why I'll probably go to Paul Cotter or something, but I don't know. Cotter. I bet Cotter. I was thinking Cotter, too. We appreciate everyone tuning in. Thank you so much. Of course, tomorrow is WTF. Uh, what the Friday already and Saturday's the Chris and Chris show the YouTube exclusive yeah I know it's crazy how it's forgot to turn the Christmas lights on dang it you know you're gonna get your wife's Sorry. gonna put you a timeout. Sorry, yeah, for sure. Wow. Uh, of course, uh, our everydayers keep things afloat here on this show. So, of course, tune in each and every day to us for my man Chris Golick. I'm Tony Cardasco. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. It's not starting.